I wanted to upcycle things I already have around my home, including glassware, bowls, furniture. As some of you already know, I've recently moved and had sold a lot of my furniture pieces, so I'm going to upcycle some old ones that I found on the Facebook marketplace, as well as some pillow covers. I thought it would be fun to use things I already have at home, as well as bring a little of the outdoors indoors. I found this dresser on the Facebook marketplace and picked it up for $80. It's a replica, so it's not real wood. It's a lot of MDF and it's got a veneer onto it with quite a bit of Knox to it. Pascal was quite curious what was going on. I think he may even want to help. So I thought maybe I could upcycle this. So what I want to do is give it a whole new makeover. I'll start by cleaning this piece with a degreaser dish soap and once I've done that then I'm just going to kind of go with it and see where the vibe takes me. The granite top actually had quite a few small knocks and gouges on it including the drawer fronts. But it is really fun to restyle these replica styled furniture pieces and there's so many fun things you can do with it to kind of Design it into your home decor, including your own color palette. I thought I would have some fun with some layers and colors for this piece. And give it a little old world effect. So I'm going to mix Aunt Fleur and French linen chalk paint together as a base color. Take out some old chip brushes and get the hardware off. Once I have everything prepped and ready to go, I put all my hardware into a bag so that way I don't lose any of the screws. So I'll go and mix the paints up first, then I'll start with my base coat. Creating your own color tones is actually a lot of fun. And this way you have a lot more choices depending on what you want to design. Now a really good plan is if you're wanting to blend your paints, because I've created a base using two different colors, I'm actually going to use those two colors again as I get into the layering effect. When I start with my base coat, I love to create lots of texture. So I use very little paint and go in small sections and do a full coat and two full coats in thin layers. This way the paint doesn't get bulky and runny and clumpy. And because this is a chalk paint, what will happen is even a lot of the texture I'm making with the brush strokes, it's not really going to be that noticeable because it dries in such a flat matte finish. But as I get into the project, I wanna show what all this texture will do for highlights and lowlights. So I did two full coats and I'm gonna wait for each coat to dry completely before I get into my next step. So using the French linen and the En Fleur, what I'm gonna do now is create a fun layered effect. So I'm gonna use Obison Blue and I think this is going to look really nice with these decoupage papers. So there's actually two styles here. They'll be in my description box below. And I'm going to do the tabletop as well as the two sides with this decoupage paper. Decoupage is very easy. It just takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of time. In the video, it seems like it goes really quick and easy, but you do have to be patient with a little bit of the creasing and perhaps maybe a bit of bubbling. But there's always a neat trick by using the saran wrap that will help even that all out. So I'm going to reactivate my base coat just by adding a little bit of water to each section that I'm working on, including the brush that I'm going to be painting with. So I have about three paintbrushes going and I kind of swap them back as I'm grabbing each color. And the fun part about blending is just letting the bristles of your brush do the work for you. 
I generally will start to play with where I want the colors and wherever I want to kind of take it back, you can always just grab a little bit of that base coat and this will correct if you want to just take back somewhere that you'd want to reconfigure where you want your colors to equation on your project. When I first started painting furniture, one thing that I found that I did is I would hold my brush too hard to the surface I'm painting. If you just hold it really lightly and just let the tips of your brush just kind of glide, it will blend your colors in so smoothly. And again, I don't have any real plan. I just kind of play with the color tones I'm working with and just kind of go with the mood. So I generally will go with darker colors around edges and corners, and I'm just gonna play around with where I want the blue hue to be placed on to the piece as I'm working in the sections. Everything can be corrected. So again, if there's something you've done and you're just not really taking to it, just grab that base color and go ahead and start where you want to recorrect it and do something else. And again, just hold that brush very, very lightly and just lightly, lightly feather, almost like you're applying a makeup. And remember not to hold your brush very tight. When I first started practicing any type of blending, that's exactly what I was doing wrong. I would hold the brush with my hand too tight, as well as I would hold the brush to my project too hard. So the more I lighten up, the softer the blending seemed to come through. Because this is a medium to larger size dresser, sometimes it's just good to keep your paint brushes a little bit moist and the areas that you're working on just grab yourself a little bit of water and just add that in and this will help keep everything nice and moist until you're finished blending and take your time if you want to do this over a weekend or even over a couple of weeks you can always just throw your brushes into a bag and you can just add a little bit of water to them and just start right where you left off but as you can see here, I'm literally holding the base of the brush, the handle, really very, very lightly. And even the tips of my bristles are hitting the furniture itself very, very lightly. Again, I wanted to go with a very old, nostalgic kind of look to this piece. So I really like using the brown chalk paint just to give it that dark undertone that naturally would happen over time. And it kind of gives it a little bit of an older effect. And when I add the blue, I'm just going to go in random and kind of just go with it how I see. But as you can see, I'm just showing on my hand, if I push the brush really, really hard, it just kind of really, it doesn't blend. But if I hold it really softly and lightly touch the project with the bristles, everything just becomes a lot softer and smoother to blend with. And again, when I first started doing this, that was the one thing I finally realized I was doing that was taking me so much longer to blend is just holding the brush too tight and I was brushing too hard against the furniture project. Chalk paint is very forgiving, so it's a lot of fun to play with the color hues. So I'm going to lay out the decoupage where I want it and I want the seam of the pattern to match up and then I'll go ahead and use the Mod Podge. You'll want to be relatively generous with it because you don't want to have any additional air pockets so it's really good to be liberal with the Mod Podge. This is a very thin decoupage paper, so what happens as soon as the moisture of the Mod Podge hits it, it really starts to wrinkle and crease. So I find if I use a little bit of cling wrap and start rubbing it with the cling wrap, this will help smooth out all of those wrinkles. I have done this in the past, but try your hardest not to touch it with your bare fingers as it will tear the paper.
Decoupaging a piece of furniture can definitely take a few minutes. The video kind of gives you the illusion that it goes along very quickly, but this is sped up. But it does take a little bit of patience to get all of the creases out. But once it's finished, it looks so beautiful. I just pour out the Mod Podge as I need it, so this way I don't waste it. Now for the sides, I just used a piece and what I'm going to do is blend the paints around the decoupage paper using all the same colors as I was doing onto the front of the dresser. And I'm going to blend it in so it just looks faded. Because there's a piece of the dresser that's got a recessed area, I find that adding a little bit of that stippling, also creating the texture around where the paper meets the dresser, will actually kind of disguise that it's a decoupage. One thing that I love to do is actually create my own wax color. So I'm going to use clear wax. Then I'm going to use the blue that I've used into the furniture project and I only kind of wing it when it comes to the ratio. So it's almost like three parts wax to one part paint. And making a custom color wax is a great way to adding more layer and depth to a project. So I'm going to apply the clear wax all over where I've painted first. That's going to kind of create the barrier when I go to add my color wax and I've added too much or I want to take some away. That clear wax barrier allows me to just grab a little bit of the clear wax and actually do my own corrections as I'm going. Because I have the clear wax, when I use it over a colored wax, it will actually now act as an eraser. So this really gives for a lot of forgiveness when you're playing around where you want your color hues as well as your depth. So I'm going to go all around the curved areas and probably in the corners, but I'm going to be very random as again, I really would like to go with just a really old kind of nostalgic look for this piece. I also decided to add in a little bit of white wax and again I'm using the blue custom wax as a darker hue and then the white wax as a lighter hue so lots of different color textures going into this piece. I love to have about three color tones, a dark, a medium and a light and this creates depth. To give it a really cool, worn look, one of my favorite things to do is add some speckling to my furniture. I don't do this all the time, and you certainly don't have to do this, but I'll take a little bit of paint, dip it into some water, and I'll just go around and speckle and just go around the corners, around the hardware, and again, this just gives it that nostalgic look. And this too also gives a little bit of a textured look as well. And if you use dark or a light paint, this is also going to give a highlight and a low light. I really wanted to try this stencil, it's gorgeous. This is the Deco Peacock by Kasha's new line from the redesign by Prima. This stencil design looks gorgeous on furniture as you can see in the example of Kasha's furniture piece. But I thought I would try this on a decorative pillow case for throw pillows. So I've had these pillowcases for a really long time. I bought them at Ikea probably about five years ago. They've definitely had some wear, but they're in actually really good condition. So I'm going to iron them out, make sure that my fabric's nice and smooth. And what I want to do is I actually am going to use a chalk paint and the stencil so I can kind of permanently press that print onto here. And it's actually really easy and it's washable. I have done this to other fabrics and it turns out beautiful. 
So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to lay down the stencil exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to have some of my paint right on hand. Make sure that your roller is really well rounded with the paint all absorbed equally into the roller as best you can and work in small sections. Because you don't want to move the transfer by working in small sections, it shouldn't actually jar the transfer to shift. That's the biggest thing. I've made the mistake. I'll actually go and roll too much at once, and then when the transfer shifts, it will kind of mess up the pattern. So by doing it in the small sections, you should be absolutely fine. Then wait for everything to dry in about 20 minutes then just put the iron over top of the paint that you've just completed and dried and this is really going to press it in i've washed once i've done this and it should not bleed through you should be good to go but i love ikea i've always been really happy with their products they have great pillow inserts with the duck fill feathers in them and I think it really turns out beautiful and this is a great way to upcycle what you already have. I wanted to demonstrate how easy it is just to bring in the outdoors indoors for home decor and same with Hadley. So walking the dogs every day I'm always coming across and looking at all of the nature rocks and this one in particular is quite interesting because it almost crumbles when you touch it and it's just it's really interesting texture. So then I thought wow this might actually be a really cool idea including Perhaps maybe finding some branches with some moss into it and kind of creating your own open terrarium. I definitely have quite a bit of glassware and it just kind of sits in my shelves and it's not being used so I thought this would be perfect to make an open terrarium with. So I'm going to clean out the glass really well and I'm just going to put in all that rock that we found out on our walk. So I'm just going to lay a base and this is really going to help for the irrigation of an open terrarium. So you only need just enough to cover the bottom base and again that's where the water can sit without sitting saturated into the soil. So I'm going to use this tropical mix and I'm just going to pour in eh, about a quarter and then I'll go and add the moss branches that I found and just kind of play with them and just see where you like to place them. The other thing I ended up doing was picking up a few of the little tropical plants. Now I was able to pick them up. Mine varied from $1.99 in cost all the way up to $7.99 and you only need like two or three in an open glass terrarium like this. So this will give it room to grow. Once I placed the little plants, all I did was grab a little bit of soil just to help pack them in. And then as soon as I was had everything into place, I just added a few more rocks on the top, again, just for some texture. And I was really, really surprised how fast and easy this was and really inexpensive. The only thing with the open terrarium, you're going to treat it like any other house plant and just kind of water it about once a week. And again, you're going to have the rock at the bottom giving it really good irrigation. So about two years ago, I made a closed terrarium on the channel on a YouTube video and it's still going strong. The beauty thing about a closed terrarium is you add a little bit of water and that's it. You, it's always going to recycle that water. 
So I have this canister, which is almost like a drink canister that has the spout at the bottom. I never use it. So I cleaned it all out and I'm gonna make a closed terrarium with this one. So again, just adding in that little bit of rock that I found, adding in a bit of that tropical mix soil. And I even went into my backyard and found some colored and other textured rocks that I could put at the top once I've placed in the pieces of moss that I got from our nature walk and a couple of pieces of the tropical plant. Once you place the water into a closed terrarium, you don't have to reopen and rewater. What it's gonna do is it's almost just going to recycle back over and over again. It's very, very cool that it's once it's closed, you're pretty much good to go. You've created your own tiny little ecosystem. Both Ryan and I are really looking forward to an adventure down to Temecula, California. So we're going to take our DIYs and head down with the Redesign by Prima workshop. And our special guests at this workshop are going to be Annie Sloan herself, flying in all the way from the United Kingdom. And Kasha Furniture is also going to be part of this event. And we really wanted to create this really nice boutique atmosphere with demonstrating and creating and spending that one-on-one -on -one time with you. I'm going to leave the link in my description box below if you'd like for more information and for ticket information. Again, would love to see you there. Thank you so much for joining me in this week's video and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon. Until then, take care. Mm -hmm.